Hello and thank you. Welcome to the, let me turn this up, Falcon Crest After Show here on JLJ Media. My brother just reminded me that it was the 40th anniversary on December 4th, 1981. So a couple days ago, or actually yesterday, as I'm filming this yesterday, or as this airing a couple days ago, it was the 40th anniversary of the premiere of Falcon Crest, which is considered one of the big four of the 80s soaps. It was the last one to premiere out of the four and um, it had a successful run uh, for eight seasons. So, nine seasons or so. So it is very interesting because um, I, I was like, well, I do this after show, I should say something about it because it is a big milestone um, to look back on. And I wanna say, as I'm doing this, I started this show, this after show with Falcon Crest earlier this year, and you have all shown up, you have listened, you have watched, on the audio side, I just want to say I'm hi to all my audio listeners on the podcast. This show is available on all streaming audio services like iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google, Apple. I want to say thank you because every week when I do my numbers, the Falcon Crest After Show is in the top 20, sometimes top 10, even when I don't have new episodes. So what it shows me is there's this huge interest about this show and listening and talking about it. I also want to thank all the Falcon Crest groups um on facebook you know you posted in their groups that you're very communicative you talk a lot about it with me you give me your opinions you share things with me that i didn't realize i started doing this one in the dallas after show earlier this year and i just so glad i did i had no idea that this would be anything anybody would have interest in but there are people from around the world that love falcon crest and i want a place to talk about it i might do a live show soon in 2022 that's my goal but this is probably the last show of the year uh, we are in December. Happy holidays, everybody. And um, I usually start to slow down the month of December and part of January. So um, check out the old episodes. You, if you're new to this, check out all my episodes on YouTube at JLJ Media. It's a playlist for Falcon Crest After Show. Or go to Audio Street, any audio stream so you get your podcast. Type in Falcon Crest After Show or JLJ Media and it should pop up. And you can do that. So um, but some of the things that it premiered December 4th, as you, most of you know that. The first season, and maybe you guys don't know this or not, but if you're if you're fans, you know this already. A lot of the episodes in the first season were self-contained. Uh, Earl Hammer Jr. didn't want a soap opera, so to speak, format, and actually decided to have them almost like just regular episodic episodes. Season two, of course, became a soap opera. <laughs> they started literally storyline arcs, cliffhangers, everything, uh, and it became what it what it is today. Um, it brought us the return of Oscar winner for Johnny Belinda, Jane Wyman. And it came at a time the same year, her ex-husband was the most powerful man in the world, Ronald Reagan, became president of the United States. I remember I was in junior high school, uh, was they call middle school now, I was in junior high school, when Ronald Reagan was elected. And he was married to Nancy Davis, Reagan, of course. But all of a sudden there was this first wife, and I didn't know anything about it, I was, I was too young to know about old Hollywood. And that Jane Wyman, who stars on Falcon Crest, it's, it was just so weird. You're married with your current wife. You're running the country. Then one of the biggest shows on television stars your ex-wife. Now, I looked and looked and looked and looked all over the place um, for any kind of quotes from Ronald Reagan about the show. I didn't see any. I remember she didn't really do any talk about him either. I believe she voted for him. You guys out there may know more than I do. I think she said she voted for him. Um, I may have cracked a joke about that or two that she did, you know, she's a Democrat kind of or something. I don't, I'm not sure. I've been seeing various things back in the day. She had talked about him. He had talked about her. They had separate lives yet at the same time, it was very, it was very Reagan-esque era. The eighties were so Reagan. I was just, I just remember back in the time thinking, this is very interesting. Um, he's running the country in a sex life. That and her kids, their kids were Michael and Michael Reagan and Maureen, I think it is. I think Michael had a show at the time where he got a show later because um, Patty Davis and Ron Reagan Jr. were Nancy Davis kids with him and they got into all kinds of things. But I think I remember, I, 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 if I remember correctly, Michael Reagan or later on, we, we had a, a show or something. We were doing, doing hosting or whatever. Um, but they were talked about that. But it brought her into the forefront again. It brought her back into stardom and fame. Um, like I said in the previous show, um, she was a different kind of matriarch, different kind of, I guess, villain. Was Angela Channing really a villain? 
that's for you to decide out there. Uh, it gave us stars. It, it built us stars, heartthrobs, like Lorenzo Lamas. He became a total heartthrob, and he came from his own showbiz family, Fernando Lamas, I mean, all the whole fat whole old Hollywood, but he became it to his own. Of course, he's done other things since then, of course. Um, but he is, but he literally, I feel like this was his one of his big breaks. Maggie Sullivan, who of course later went on to Castle, Dharma and Greg, and all kinds of things. She became one. David Selby, who played Richard. And it's funny because Robert Foxworth, who played Chase, was married to former superstar TV person who I had a huge crush on as a kid. Uh, when she played Samantha Stevens on Bewitched, she was married to Elizabeth Montgomery. Like that's a interesting thing there too. Um, but it, the show itself was very old world. Um, you know, it was, it, was about, it was about this grape winery. I mean, it was just ripe. <laughs> I didn't even plan, plan that. Ripe with storyline. I thought that was great because you know, Dynasty had Dynasty had oil. Dallas had oil. Uh, Mass Landing had other things. Um, but this was grapes. It was set in Northern California. And I moved to Northern California in the late 80s when the show was kind of winding down. Uh, so I didn't know anything about Northern California. And so it was like a glimpse into something I didn't know. Now that I, I lived there for 16 years, I experienced, I've been to Napa and Sonoma and it's another wine country. Um, great, great backdrop, a great backdrop for you, for a show. As a person who creates shows, but that is, that's a good one for a winery. And a family fighting over the wine and having an Italian connection, the Giabertis, and the, and this. And I thought it was great. I thought it was. I thought it was great. And, and of course, and Alicia, which I talked about on the show too um, beforehand. Um, a lot of guest stars of, of past, you know, Laura Brigida, a lot of Turner, Cesar Romero. I mean, they just, they just were coming through. Um, I felt like they came through that show because it seemed a little classier, possibly than the others not as wild and wacky. The show was never really wild and wacky. So the other shows would delve into some territory that would be a little, you know, like hard to believe. But you know, I love my soaps. You know, I love that. Um, but I just want to commemorate just 40 years of a show that I watched religiously on Fridays, Friday nights. There was no DVR, there was no, um, there was no taping yet either. I mean, well, there was some taping. You could, I mean, I was taping a few things back then. Um, but it was into the 90s when I was like really taping stuff. But it was very nice to uh sit and watch a show on a Friday night. It was Dallas and Fountain Crest for me on CBS. Um, but I want to give a shout out to everybody. I hope to get guests on the show soon or on the show. I know a couple people, so I'm gonna try to get them on the show next season, next year. Uh, hope to bring you more of my insights on some of the characters, some of the special episodes. I enjoy doing this after show. You know, my network, JLJ Media, we do we, we, we kind of specialize in soaps. I mean, a lot of the soap stuff. Now, soaps past and present. But uh, Falcon Crest is always one of my favorites. So happy anniversary, Falcon Crest, for your premiere. And everyone, please have a great, safe holiday season. We will see you in 2022 uh, with more of the Falcon Crest after show.